okay, we are back again. Next is torque developed in a motor. So, this is also that your what you call this motion is given, this commutator segment, these are brasses and these are the conductor place, right. Here it is, look at that, here it is make plus and this is n pole and here it is s, right, here it is dot. So, this means current entering into that and leaving the place. I mean, this is your, this is that convention, right. And this is the production of torque, and this is your what you call it is a uh, it was it is uh, cylindrical in shape, right. So, uh, you will find things are simple that now when the field of a machine is excited and and a potential difference is impressed upon the machine terminals, the current in the armature winding reacts with the air gap flux to produce a torque which tends to cause the armature to revolve, right. This is actually figure 3, this is actually figure 3 and these two dots are here, this is basically the neutral zone, right. So, so figure 13 illustrate the production of torque in a motor. Now, when the brasses are on the neutral axis, all the armature conductors lying under the north pole carrying currents in a given direction, while those lying under south pole carrying currents in the reverse direction, right. So, if you look into this, this is your this is your neutral zone. So, all the currents in under uh, your all the conductors under the north pole flowing in one direction, right, and in the south conductors under south pole carrying current in the other direction, because one going into the page, another is your what you call leaving the page, and this is the brasses, right. So, the commutator serves to reverse the current in each uh, armature coil at the instant it passes through the neutral axis, so that above relation is always maintained as the armature rotates. So, when armature will rotate the commutator segment this polarity this this will maintain right. Uh, whenever it is by your at any instant when it is passing this uh, neutral uh, neutral axis. So, this polarity of these two brass uh, your two brasses always will remain same right. So, that is your uh, that is your you have in a DC machine you have several uh, your brasses your what you call several commutator segment if you see that open DC machine. So, in that case that you have to work, what you call just I told it passes the neutral axis. So, that the above relation is always maintained as the armature rotates right. So, commutator serves to reverse the current right in each armature coil. So, next is all the conductors under the north pole carry inward flowing currents that I showed the plus convention which react with their air gap flux to produce downward acting force and a counter and a counter clockwise torque. So, this is your what you call this is the diagram because this all the all the your force diagram are given diagram from stronger magnetic field to the weaker one everywhere from this diagram it is look at that arrow is downward here it is upwards right. From that you can find out that torque will be developed right. So, in this case under the and it produces downward acting forces and a counter clockwise torque right. Similarly, the conductors under the south pole carrying your outward flowing current which produce upward acting force these forces also give rise to the counter clockwise torque. So, so in the, that means, if the air gap flux is assumed to be your what you call radially directed to all points right. So, each of the force act tangentially and produces a your what you call turning moment equal to the force multiplied by its lever arm right. Therefore, there is the radial distance from the center of the conductor to the center of the shaft. So, this way we will we know the force equation, we know the EF EMF equation right, everything we know. Therefore, the magnitude of the torque developed by each conductor will be B I L, this is the force into R in Newton meter right, the, where R actually your what you call this uh, R actually measured from this actually it is a cylindrical shape right, it is a cylindrical shape not shown in this diagram, it is made up from, made from center to this to that part right. So, it is a radius. So, all this write up is there just read carefully. Huh? So, this is my torque equation B i L into R Newton meter. Now, if the motor contains jet contactors, the total torque developed by the armature will be B i L R into Z Newton meter, because that was for one conductor, but total will be B i L R into Z Newton meter. Now, B is equal to flux density over per meter square, I armature current in a conductor that is ampere, L is equal to length of his each conductor that is meter and R is average radius at which conductors are placed that is also meter and J total number of armature conductors right. Now, if I A is the armature current then for your I should be equal to I A upon A that means your what you call I A is the armature current 
then and you have a number of parallel path right. So, i should be is equal to i a upon a right. So, second thing is the flux density b should be equal to phi upon small a right and uh, your a is the number of parallel path right. So, it is it is uniformly distributed. So, it is uh, you are uniformly distributed. So, it will be what you call the current per your what you call per path and this is phi upon a over per meter square phi is the flux and a is the your cross sectional area I mean what is this we will see that. Now, a is equal to cross sectional flux path at radius r that means you have to find it is 2 that, that is it is a cylinder its surface area is 2 pi r l if l is the length r is the radius and flux path at radius r that means basically it is part, uh, basically 2 pi r l by p that is surface area per pole right. So, that is why cross sectional flux we call it is a flux path at radius r it will be 2 pi r l upon p 2 pi r l is that your we are assuming it is a cylindrical so surface area right. Therefore, if you substitute all you will get t is equal to z phi l into i r upon 2 pi r l into p by a newton meter that is or we can write same equation t is equal to z phi i a upon 2 pi into p by a newton meter or your 0.159 then z phi p i a upon a 7 then 1 upon 2 pi you make it right it is 0 0.159 or t is equal to then this this is a constant this is a constant. So, t all these things are constant. So, we can write your t is equal to k into phi into i a that is phi into i a rate 0 0.159 z p upon a is a constant z p upon your I mean I have taken this one right z p upon 2 pi a it is a constant. So, torque is proportional to your what you call pro, pro, uh, proportional to product of flux and your uh, armature current right and in that uh, DC machine flux actually depend on the field current. So, flux is proportional to the field current right we will see the series motor sun motor how is it. So, that means your uh, another thing before uh, although it is not marked here, but I am telling that flux actually proportional to the field current right that means your torque actually torque actually proportional to then your field current product of field current and armature current right instead of phi we have made it is i f. So, the equivalent circuit of DC motor. Now, this diagram I have drawn this is a separately excited your DC machine right DC motor. So, if you look into that a separately excited means the field actually is given a different your supply right they have in different from a different source where that say DC supply separately is given to your field and this is your what you call this is your motor this is the supply voltage this is the armature resistance R A which is very small E B is the back M A polarity is marked and here I A is equal to I L armature current is equal to load current R is equal to 0 at running quantity actually when you start the DC machine right first year also perhaps you, you will do lab electrical lab also for this thing or whatever it is right whenever you start the DC machine at the beginning that R should be at the high, your what you call maximum position right because as soon as you otherwise as soon as you switch on back M F will not be there and if you make it at a very small your what you call very uh, I mean it is at a minimum value then armature resistance of DC motor is very small therefore, a huge current will flow and fuse will blow if you do not connect fuse somewhere here right. So, at the time of start what you do that this resistance should be at maximum and then you start that you what, what you call that your more then you give the supply then your what you call motor will what, uh, what you call say it will start slowly and slowly will pick up and then back MF will be developed. Now, after that as when speed is pick up slowly and slowly you cut the resistance and bring this this resistance to 0, but look into that in laboratory what we do that we have connected one SPST single fold single throw switch and this switch is open at the when machine when you start and this resistance maximum this switch is open when you cut this resistance to 0 right may be because of some contact some little resistance may be there after that you close this switch such that the path will be like this. So, this is totally off from this and as soon as you close as soon as you close it that will give you the what you call that no no circuit resistance no external no circuit external resistance in this uh, in this circuit. So, as soon as you just close it so little bit you will find as soon as you close it you will find the speed speed is slightly increased because here because of the contact or something some still some your what you call some resistance was there that is a use SPST a single fold single throw switch such that you can close it when that means what that means your you start this when keep R is maximum 
right and then when and sub give the supply and regarding starter we will not study in this course DC machine starter will not study, but as soon as it will speed will pick up slowly and slowly you cut down the resistance and being the resistance R is equal to 0. Once R is 0 right at running quantity then you close this SPST switch such that this will be completely cut off and this will be the path right. So, this is your separately excited your what you call DC motor and V is the terminal voltage and your E B is the back EMF. So, in this case and this is R F, R F is the field resistance, this is the field that this you also you can vary, uh, this is your uh, your field resistance R F dash and this is your field and field resistance is R F and this is that additional resistance inserted here, this is called R F dash right and this is your field winding and field resistance is R F and this is the supply right. So, so R is the R is very small for DC machine, uh, I put a question to you although you are in for this thing. How, how can you measure that uh, armature resistance of a DC machine in the laboratory? This is a question to you, you think right. So, I is equal to armature current is equal to load current and E B is equal to V minus I A into R plus R A. Of course, the running condition R is equal to 0. That if you apply here, if you apply here your what you call uh, KVL in this in, in this in this circuit, then you will get you can easily make it polarity everything is marked, you can make it you will get E B is equal to V minus I A into R A R plus R A, but a running condition your R is equal to 0 right. Now, if it is your and this is your what you call your say your uh, sun motor. So, in this case the sun field is here, this is a field winding and this is the R F dash right, this is the R F dash. So, here S P S T I have not shown, but you can you can put it here also, the, I mean here also you can put it, but not shown here, I did not show it here right, I did not show it here you can put it right. Uh, so, I am now cleaning it. So, in this case also philosophy will remain same, remain same only here from the same supply you, you are what you call you are giving that uh, uh, you are giving the supply to the machine as well as to the sun field because it is your your parallel connected. So, this is field resistance sun field it is R f and this is your R f dash some external resistance is there R f dash right. Because it by inserting R f dash right this resistance you can vary hence you can hence you can control the field current this I f hence field current controlling means you are controlling the flux right. So, but anyway R is equal to 0 at running condition. So, therefore, I f is equal to V upon R f plus R f dash because this is the current I, uh, I f voltage is uh, V this is a parallel circuit. So, I f will be equal to V upon R f plus R f dash right and if you apply your same way if you apply your KVL. So, you will get it your I A your E B is equal to V minus I A into R plus R A, but at running condition R is equal to 0. And if you apply KCL here, if you apply K, this is your armature current, this is your uh, say your line current and this is your what you call that field current. So, if you apply at this look at that cursor at this point you apply KCL right, you apply KCL at this point you will get your I A is equal to I L minus I F right. So, this is a simple thing. So, for series motor actually series winding actually it is in series with that armature. So, in that case armature current is equal to load current is equal to field current for series motor. Here series field is in series with the armature it is in series right and this is your back EMF and this is V. So, this is series motor in the series motor armature current is equal to field current is equal to load current. So, and if you apply your your and this is the series field resistance R S right. And if you apply here also your what you call that KVL, so you will get E B is equal to V minus I A into R S plus R A, R S is the series field resistance. How to control the flux of series field this that we will not study in this in the in this course, just some basic right, not beyond that at first year level. So, this is equal to E B is equal to V minus I A into R S plus R A. So, let us take one small example. Suppose a 230 volt sun motor runs at 800 rpm on no load and takes 5 ampere. Resistance of the armature and field winding are 0.25 ohm and 230 ohm respectively. Calculate the speed of the motor when it is loaded and takes 60 ampere from the mains. This is the problem. So, no load condition as well as you say another loading car, your what you call another when it is loaded it is taking 60 ampere, but at no load it is taking 5 ampere two conditions and other things are given right. So, we have to find out the speed right. 
So, this is the no load condition, this is sun motor circuit diagram, this is I L 0, this is your what you call I F, because 230 volt v, thing, uh, voltage supply voltage is V, R F is given 230 ohm, no external resistance shown here, I A 0 uh, your what you call uh, your this is the I A 0, R A is given 0.25 ohm and no load speed 800 rpm and this is the back EMF. So, field current I F is equal to 230 upon R F, 230 volt is supply, 230 is the R F so, 230 by 230 is 1 ampere. So, I L 0 is given 5 ampere, it is given because here it is given your what you call on no load and takes 5 ampere, right. That means, it is drawing line 5 ampere current from the line. So, I L 0 is equal to 5 ampere. Therefore, I L 0 is equal to I L 0 minus I F. So, 5 minus 1. So, I L 0 is equal to 4 ampere, right. Therefore, this circuit only E B 0 is equal to V minus R I 0, find out the back E M F. So, E B 0 is 230 minus R A is 0.25 into I A 0 4. So, E B 0 is equal to 229 volt, right. Now, this is on no load condition. Now, when it is loaded, this is the circuit. At that time, it is drawing current of 60 ampere, right. And this is the current say I A 1, R A is 0.25 ohm, you have to find out what is the speed, right. And this is 230 ohm, that means field current, you are what you call I F 230 upon 231 ampere. So, at no load or full or, or at this load, field current will remain same, again it is 1 ampere, that means flux remain constant, both the cases field current constant means the flux remain constant. Therefore, I A 1 will be your I L minus I F, so 59 ampere 60 minus 1. Therefore, E B 1 will be V minus your I A 1 into your R A 0.25. So, directly I am writing this, you will get E B 1 is equal to 215.25 volt, right, this you will get it. So, this is on loaded condition, this is a circuit, you just try to separate circuit and solve like a DC circuit, you can only looking at this all these conditions, right. So, after this what you will do that we know this E B is equal to phi z n by 60 into P by A is equal to k into phi into n, but I F is constant for both the cases, if I F is constant means the flux is constant, right. Therefore, E B 0 by E B 1 you can write phi 0 n 0 upon phi 1 n 1, because this is the condition from here you can write one equation E B 0 is equal to k phi 0 n 0, another equation you can write E B 1 is equal to k phi 1 n 1. So, k k will be cancelled because these are constant, so it is phi 0 n 0 upon phi 1 n 1 because, but field is constant I F is constant for both the cases current is 1 ampere therefore, phi 0 is equal to phi 1. So, if it is phi 0 is equal to phi 1 therefore, E B 0 we computed 229, E B 1 we computed 215.25 is equal to n 0 we know 800 divided by n 1 the speed therefore, n 1 is equal to 752 rpm this is the answer right. Now, this is one example we will take another 3 or 4 later. Now, characteristic of DC motors. Now, first is a torque current characteristic for DC motors we know that torque is equal to k into phi into I A right. Now, in case of a sound motor the flux phi is approximately constant and the torque is proportional to I A. That is why that previous example I took because flux for DC sun motor remain constant because field supply voltage more or less remain constant, field resistance more or less remain constant, therefore flux will remain constant because field current remain constant means the flux is constant. Therefore, torque actually proportional to I A that means it is almost straight line characteristic, right. So, therefore, that is the curve of torque current character is practically a straight line. Now, in the case of series motor, the because series field in series with the armature, so armature current is equal to field current, right. That means, flux is proportional to I A, because torque is equal to your torque is equal to suppose k into phi into I A. For series motor, your flux actually proportional to I A, because in series motor your I A is equal to I F, because series field is connected in series with the armature. So, I A is equal to I F, that means, if phi proportional to I A means the torque actually proportional to I A square. So, that is why this your everything is written here, that is why torque is proportional to I A square. So, if we draw the characteristic, this is the torque, this is I A armature current, for sun motor it is straight line, right, this is marked it here and for series motor it is parabola, right. So, this is the torque current character, your current characteristic of your series motor and sun motor. Now, second is speed current characteristic. In this case, we know again back M F is equal to k into phi into n. Actually, n is equal to uh, that is example we might have used capital N, but n is equal to small n is equal to capital N. Now, 
in the case of a sun motor we know this vacuum is equal to v minus i r a right under running condition we know that. So, it is E v is equal to v minus i r a. So, therefore, we can E v is equal to k phi n is equal to v minus i r a right that means, n is equal to we can write your k dash v minus i r a by phi where k dash is equal to 1 upon k right. Therefore, in a shunt motor the flux phi is more or less practically constant it is more or less constant that we have seen also field current more or less constant. So, flux constant so flux is a constant therefore, an i r a drop is very small because r a actually for a machine is very small DC machine is very small right. So, this i r a drop is very small about 3 to 6 percent of v therefore, the percentage drop is speed from low load to full load is of the same order right. Therefore, the DC sun motor is therefore, considered as constant speed motor sometime they ask this question that why DC sun motor is a constant speed motor this is the reason right. So, though its speed drops slightly with the increases in load. So, in the case of a series motor again n is equal to k dash v minus i r a and r s is the series field resistance here you have to add r s divided by phi, but in the series motor phi is proportional to i a because i a nothing but the armature current is equal to field current in series motor, but that is why phi proportional to i a and series motor i a is equal to i a. Therefore, you can write n is equal to say k double dash v minus i a into r a plus r s i a. So, here actually here actually it is something like this if it is if phi just hold on if phi actually proportional to i a that means phi is equal to say some constant k 1 into i a if you substitute here some k 1 into i a therefore, k dash upon k 1 we are calling as k double dash right something like this. So, if you do so if you do so, so it is coming like this right therefore, n is equal to k double dash this constant v upon i a minus r a plus r s right. So, this part is constant and it is v upon i a here both the phi and i a vary with load because phi is proportional to i a if load changes then armature current will change and armature current is equal to field current therefore, flux also will change therefore, both phi and i a vary with the load because phi proportional to i a if the load increases phi also your increases with load current that is i a increases right thus v by i a decreases because if i a increases. So, v by i a will decrease right therefore, with the increase in load speed decreases for series motor. So, if the load is removed from the series motor completely. So, phi becomes extremely small right if you remove the load that phi will become very small right and hence the i a. So, i a also will be decreased right therefore, v by i a is very large in and this and speed is very high right. Therefore, it is thus dangerous to remove the load completely from the series motor. Therefore, a series motor should always be started on load. So, series motor should not be run on low load they ask sometimes this question why series motor should not be run on no load right because of this reason only. So, that means, series motor whenever you start you have to start you know, on connecting some load then you start right otherwise it is dangerous to remove the load completely for series motor. So, if you that means, for sun motor the characteristic like this is speed current characteristic this is for sun motor and for series motor it is your speed current characteristic right. Now, another one is the speed torque characteristic. So, in this case also uh, more or less you will find that uh, speed torque characteristic for sun motor and here it is speed current characteristic for sun motor more or less same right. So, once the I mean their nature is same. Uh, once the speed current and uh, your current torque current characteristics of DC motors are developed the relation between the speed and the torque in each case uh, can be found out right. In the case of a sun motor speed slightly drops on full load the motor can be considered as a constant speed motor this is the speed torque characteristic of DC motor right. Similarly, in the case of a series motor nature of the speed torque curve is similar to that of the speed current curve right. So, these two this two I did not give here intentionally I did not give here the mathematics one or two equations I suggest this is a small exercise for you right. The other two I have explained and this nature of these two and these two are same only thing is that you write one or two equations and just see what, whether you are 
you are what you call same characteristic from your philosophy or what you call you can get it or not right. So, next is one example. So, a, a 230 volt sun motor with a constant main field drives a load whose torque is proportional to the Q of the speed at the when running at 600 rpm. Now, it takes 30 ampere find the speed at which it will run if 10 ohm resistance is connected in series with its armature like right? actually you have to find the speed at which it will run if 10 ohm resistance is connected in series with its armature. So, look this is the circuit diagram right and it is given that uh, your what you call that 230 volt sun motor is a constant main field drives a load whose torque is proportional to the Q of the speed that means torque is proportional to N Q when running at 600 rpm it takes 30 ampere you have to find the speed at which it will run if 10 ohm resistance is connected in series with its armature. So, this is the circuit first first circuit this is E B 1 back M F. So, drawing 30 ampere N 1 is given 60, uh, 600 rpm and V is equal to 230 volt. So, when N 1 is given I O 1 is 30 ampere and let N 1 upon N 2 is equal to x yeah, N 1 is the speed for the first case 600 rpm and in, uh, this ratio you take N 1 by N 2 is equal to x and we know E B is equal to k phi n. Second circuit is that the 10 ohm resistance is connected here right and this is in the second case what will be the I A 2 and what will be N 2 right and this is 230 volt is given and this is the field current I F. Now, but field is constant. So, in that case phi 1 is equal to phi 2 is equal to phi and E B 1 upon E B 2 will be then phi 1 N 1 upon phi 2 N 2 this should be the small formula should be on your fingertips all the time right. So, and and therefore, E B 1 upon E B 2 is equal to N 1 upon N 2 is equal to x because we have assumed N 1 by N 2 is equal to say x right. So, from figure A E B 1 is equal to 230 volt that is R A is neglected. So, back A may be 230 volt from this figure R A is neglected right. So, in that case your E B 1 will be 230 volt from figure B E B 2 will be 230 minus 10 into I A 2 because 10 ohm resistance is added. So, it will be 2 minus your 230 minus 10 into I A 2 divide this E B 1 upon E B 2 is equal to 230 upon 230 minus 10 into I A 2 is equal to say x because E B 1 upon E B 2 is equal to N 1 upon N 2 is equal to x from equation 2 right. So, that means you cross multiply and given that the torque is proportional to the Q of the speed therefore, we can write T 1 by 2 to T 2 is equal to n 1 by n 2 whole cube right that is x cube. So, t 1 by t 2 is equal to x cube. So, first condition and this is the second condition we know the torque is equal to k dash phi into I a right. Therefore, we can write t 1 upon t 2 is equal to phi 1 I 1 the first case divided by phi 2 I a, I a 2 second case, but flux remain constant for sun motor therefore, phi 1 is equal to phi 2 here it is in phi 1 is equal to phi 2 that means, it will be I a 1 upon I 2 that means, T 1 upon T 2 is equal to 30 upon I A 2 is equal to x cube because this is x cube right. Therefore, 30 upon I A 2 is equal to x cube that means, I A 2 is equal to 30 upon x cube this is equation 5 this I A 2 this I A 2 you substitute here you substitute here right. If you substitute this equation will become x cube minus x square minus 30 upon 23 is equal to 0. So, it is a cubic equation you will have three solution. So, little bit of uh, little bit of uh, try, try trying this you will get x is equal to 1.55 right that means, n 1 upon n 2 is equal to x. So, n 1 is 60 uh, 600 rpm and x is 1.55. So, n 2 will be 387 rpm this is the answer for n 2 and I a 2 will be we have got I a 2 is equal to I 1 upon x cube. So, 30 upon 1.55 cube I a 2 will be approximately 8 ampere this equation little bit try and error, trial and error from your intuition you have to try right. So, such that you will get the reasonable value I mean approximate value. So, another thing is that speed control of DC motor. So, we know E B is equal to phi z n by 16 to p by a right. So, n is equal to n E B is equal to actually v minus your drop in armature circuit. Okay, thank you very much. We will be back again.